thumbs up. I know that's um, we are all together. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. On we follow you till the end of time. Yes, follow. I will follow. Follow you till the end of time. Wherever you go, I'll go. Whatever you say, Lord, I'll do. I'm available, I'm dependable, I'm reliable, master, I'm ready, I will follow, follow. Yes, follow. I will follow. Follow you till the end of time. Yes, follow. I will follow. Follow you till the end of time wherever you go i'll go whatever you say Lord, i'll do i'm a believer. i'm dependable i'm reliable must come ready. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are available, Lord, mighty God, this morning before thee. We are available, Lord, the great God, the great I am. For we know that, Lord, this morning, we have come before your presence, Lord, to worship your mighty God. Father, we give you all the glory and the honor Though we can see things changing around us, lockdown restrictions, but that did not change you. You stay the same, O oh Lord. Father, no one can lock you down. No one can restrict you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy upon our life, O oh Lord. Take all the glory this morning as we are about to share your word. Sweet Holy Spirit, we pray that may your presence be with us. Sweet Holy Spirit, we pray that may you take full charge and control of us. May you speak to all of us this morning, God. Uh, Lord, I cannot wait to hear from you this morning. Father, I am ready. For I am a reliable servant. And my brother, my sister too, we are all reliable. Lord. We depend on you totally. In Jesus' mighty name. And we say, Amen. Um, I am overexcited this morning, family. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. <laughs> uh, yesterday was my birthday, actually. I, now, someone may ask me, how old are you? Yesterday, I actually now have, I'm, I am not 24 years old, if I may tell you now. Yesterday was the, the birthday. Actually, it's not uh, the birth for my mother. That yesterday was the day that the 8th of May, I encountered Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. I always celebrate two birthdays. It's the one that, the one that I value the most is the one that when I encountered Master Jesus. It was on the 8th of May. 1997. I've been going to church Sunday school, youth, 
But it was this particular day that I had an encounter with him. I was in church, I never knew him. Until this particular day that I had an encounter with him. And three weeks after, I was baptized. And since then, I started journey with the Lord. Beloved in the Lord, it is by the grace of the Lord, which has been an amazing journey. And in 2005, I stepped into an office of a pastorship. So 16, 16 years now of uh, being a pastor, but 24 years of being a born again child of God. In the 24 years beloved in the Lord, by the grace of the Lord, the Lord, helped me to go around and to see what is happening in the body of Christ. And I still maintain and believe that love in the Lord as a Christian, we still have a lot to do for the body of Christ. There are many places and many people still need the word of God, undiluted word of God. Many are receiving diluted word of God, the word that is kind of, that can suit their feelings. Many are receiving the word that can please them. Today, we are no longer preaching the word of God the way it's supposed to be because if I preach about this, I may lose members. But to God be all the glory, for this great journey and experience within. It has never been easy, but we thank God because we're still here. We are not in the world. To God be all the glory. This morning I was this speaker, I speak about the be submissive to divine information before total take over. If you can help me to turn your Bible in the book of Acts of Apostle, chapter 13, verse 36. Very short verse. And before we read the Acts of Apostles, I would like to say this. This year, 2021, it's a year of a total takeover. Indeed, we will take off. There will be a full and total takeover this year. I believe that in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, before God created us, he had a plan for us already. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Bible says, he said, I know the plan I have for you. They are good plans and not evil. So God already had a very good plan for you and me. I can hear some feedback and noise behind. If some people have the closed phones, they can separate, you know, be far away from each other, please. So if God created you and me, had a plan for us. So God is expecting us to have a result, beloved in the Lord. A total takeover is not just a storytelling, it is a reality. It's not just a word that's, you know, is being given there so that you can be excited. But let me tell you, total takeover, it is a reality. It is the word of God. Surely we will really take over in the name of Jesus Christ. For God who made you and me had already a good plan for us. And the plan is there. Praise the Lord. So I want you to know that this year, before it ends, you will have a total takeover. Total takeover. Total takeover in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, but the Lord also wants that before you have a total takeover, the Lord God wants you to give him your body. 
so that he can have a total takeover of you. Hallelujah. You cannot just desire to have a total takeover of this world, a world that was created by God, and you want to have a total takeover over it, but you do not want God to have a total takeover over your life, your body. That is why on Wednesday we spoke about when God set Moses to build a tabernacle, but God, Lord Almighty, Yehoshua Amashia, asked Moses to start building the Ark of Covenant first. He built the Ark of Covenant. After building the Ark of Covenant, now he went for the temple. Normally, when we are starting to build, we always start from outside. But God, when he's building, he starts from inside. Hallelujah. That is God. He works not, he does not work the way you and he do work. He has his own way of working. That is why when God is coming in our life, he starts from the inside. After dealing with the inside, taking full charge and control of your inner man, and he says that he has occupied the whole space, then is going according to Romans chapter 12, one, two, then he said, brothers and sisters, you shall offer your body to me as a living sacrifice because inside that body, I have already invested myself in me. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, once you talk about the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of Covenant was made of two things. The Ark of Covenant was made with a wood acacia and the pure gold, and the pure gold covered from inside and outside. Praise the Lord. And the wood represents human, humanity. And the gold represents the divinity. Hallelujah. And inside the Ark of Covenant, there was a law. And those laws, that is what was the covenant between the children of Israel and God. Beloved in the Lord, I will ask you already to start putting your seat belt because I now believe that we have reached the level whereby I need to talk now about taking over. And I want you to have your seat belt on. I will not talk about take over today. I will kind of introduce because I'm still uh, linking myself for what we spoke about last time. But I'm just telling you that put on your seat belt. That is why I am already announcing to you about the Ark of Covenant. Hallelujah. And the Ark of the Covenant was something that every time Israel has the Ark in their midst, Israel have a picture. But my concern today is something that was symbolizing the presence of God, how it was made. It was made before even the tabernacle was even made. So that means God started from inside. So that is why I am talking about you, the person that is about to have a total takeover. Let me tell you, God is already working from your inside. Once God works in your inside, beloved in the Lord, now you offer your body to him. It is no longer Daniel that lives in our God who lives and controls me. Hallelujah. That is why we look at a man like David, Acts of Apostle, chapter 13, verse 36. Now, when David had saved God's people in his own generation, I love the word of God. I will, I will repeat. When David 
are the same God's peoples in his own generation. He fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors. After he saved God's peoples, not his own peoples, but God's peoples, and he was he died. When did he serve that in his own generation, beloved in the Lord, you and me in our generation, we are not called to serve our own peoples, but we are called to serve God's peoples. Hallelujah. And the last time I explained the word peoples, every time you hear about the word peoples, there are three things that are hidden beyond the word peoples. The first one is the end of something. And the second one, the initial intention. And the third one, the reason for why something is made for. That is what peoples means. Hallelujah. The Lord God made everything for a purpose. And God does everything for a purpose. These two statements, they are very powerful. Hallelujah. He made everything for a purpose. And he does everything for a purpose. Hallelujah. And the last week, Wednesday, we gave the book of Genesis, chapter, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to verse 18. You can write it down. You read uh, this book last on, on Wednesday. So today we're not going to read, but I just want to highlight on what we said. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to 18, we say, God calls things into existence. So nothing asks God to be created. It is himself who initiates things. He called them into existence as, as me and you. Nobody wrote a letter to say, Lord, create me. I love Mama P just gave us a scripture here, beloved in the Lord. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Hallelujah. Is not that before even you were conceived, God knew you. Before even you existed, he knew you. So it's the one who called things into existence. It's not a human being. It is God himself. And secondly, we said, what do we learn from Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 1, 14 to 18? We say everything that it calls into existence, it gave them the reason of existing. Let there be light to separate day and the night. This is the reason. I created this light so that you can give me light and separate day and night. The reason of why things exist. And thirdly, we say he equipped for a reason. Praise the Lord. He cannot create for no reason. When he creates, whatever he creates, he gives it the ability to produce what? Light. Praise the Lord. And I explained that, beloved, in the Lord last time about the two different forms. Praise the Lord. So you are where you are. Serving God for a purpose. The Lord God have equipped you. And I will deal with that later on. How God equipped us so that we can fulfill his purpose. Praise the Lord. That is very, very important, beloved in the Lord. Because I, I rather live like David. He said he served God's purpose in his own generation. And he died empty. I don't want to die full of the potential that God has given me and not losing none of them and dying. Then I have abused the potential that has been given to me by my God. I want to die empty. 
if I'm to die empty, beloved, in the Lord, you, I must make sure that I allow this God to work on me. I allow him to have a total takeover over this body so that when I say that I die to self, it means he already works the inside. He dealt with my inside. Beloved in the world, a child of God, that's already received the Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. God will work your insight, beloved, in the world. You will not be you. Such person, you will not see a person gossiping. A person that already received the Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. You will not see that person doing things that is contrary to the will of God. You will not see this person doing his own will, but he will do the will of God. He will serve God's purpose in his life. That is a person that will have a total takeover because God already has seen that he is totally surrendered himself to me. He surrender everything. I occupied his insight. He offered me his body. So even my body must give glory to God. Hallelujah. Even if I don't have to preach to you, but when you look at me, my body must give glory to God. My body must tell you about something. That is why you will see some people walk past you or tell you, are you a child of God? Are you a Christian? Hallelujah. Reading the Bible, I noticed that there are two things that God wants from us. Two. Number one, God wants you to know him. And number two, God wants you to serve him. Those are the two things God wants from us. When he spoke to Moses, he said that, Go and, Exodus chapter 3, go and deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. And he said that, bring them so that you can worship me on this mountain. Hallelujah. Do not first talk about the daughter takeover, not about entering the promised land. He said, first I delivered you so that they can come and worship me on this mountain. But most of the time, when we talk about the deliverance of children of Israel, we see out of Egypt and we talk of the promised land. God deliver me from slavery and take me to the promised land. No beloved in the Lord. God does not deliver you so that you can step into the promised land. God does not deliver you so that you can have a total takeover. God delivers you first and you must serve him. Worship in person. Before taking over your promised land, he wants you to serve in person. That is our God. Praise the Lord. But the challenge here is that I want to have a total takeover. I have allowed God to use me. Now I want to leave according to the purpose of God. But for me to live according to the purpose of God, he already laid the potential inside of me. How will I be able to take out what God has deposited inside of me? How will I be able to meet him at the place he's waiting for me? God is waiting for you somewhere. How will I get there? Because God wants us to have a total takeover. God wants us to succeed. God wants us to have a good result. God is planning good things for you and me. But first, we must do his will. 
live according to his purpose. The reason of why he created me. Hallelujah. If you understand the reason why God created me, and then I will do like David, he created me because he wants me to serve him first. I need to serve God first. That is what is important, beloved in the Lord. He did not create me for me just to declare and shout, the total take over, will take over, will take over. You want to take over the government. You want to take over finances. You want to take over families. You want to take over your neighborhood. You want to take over everything. But you must know that God is a God of principles. Hallelujah. You must know that God makes the principles. You must know that God does not bow before human attitude and the mood. No. We cannot manipulate God. If you need success, you need the result. But you must know that before you get those results, you must abide by the principles of God in your life. If you do not abide by principles, do not expect any result without them. Either you sow a seed, then you expect the harvest. You cannot fast for 40 days. You know, I love prayer so much. But I understand that the God um, I'm serving is a God of principles. I cannot go even under the bed and begin to pray, Lord, I want to harvest. I can pray for money and finish my 40 days. If I do not sow, I will not harvest. Those are principles, beloved. If we want a victory, if we want a total takeover, beloved, in the Lord, we need to abide by certain principles. The principles of God. He wants you to serve him. That is why I explained to you about the callings that we have in our life. There is mono vocation. That means you are called to do one thing. God called you, you leave everything beyond, you go full time in ministry as the disciples. He found them, they were fishing, he called them, they left everything and they followed him. And by your vocation, that means you have a two things that you do. You are called, you are full time, you are serving God, you are a pastor, you are a bishop, you are an apostle, you are an evangelist, but you are still busy running your business, or you are busy working. And we get the example of Daniel and we get the example of Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Daniel was in politics, but he was still serving God. Apostle Paul was an apostle, but he was a tent maker. He was making tents. That was his business. And we spoke of multi-vocation. That as a, you've been anointed with a different kind of gift. And we touch about David and Solomon. Beloved in the Lord, there are some people that the Lord anointed you, as the example of ba uh, uh, Bezalel as well. The Lord anointed him with some skills. The Lord can anoint you, beloved in the Lord, with some talent. You can see someone, he can play the drum, he can play the keyboard, he can play the guitar, he can sing well, he can preach well, multi vocation. And on top of that, the person is so beautiful. That's the case of David. They say that a young, beautiful man. Beauty is a gift. 
There are some people that they are using their beauty to win souls. But there are some that are abusing their beauty because they are not understanding the reason of why God made them beautiful. Praise the Lord. So, beloved in the Lord, if you want to have a total takeover, you must serve God and you can serve God in any area the Lord has anointed. If you have the talent, the talent of coordinating things, it is a vocation, beloved in the Lord. Serve God with it. So, every time you hear about vocation, it's not about you becoming a pastor, you becoming a bishop. You're becoming no beloved in the Lord. There's a lot you can do in the body of Christ. There are some people that God has talented to. They saw it. They know how to do it. You can use anything God has anointed you and blessed with at the service of God. Because the Bible says what? The Bible says, David are the son of God's purpose. So once you serve God's purpose, with the gift that you have, it's easy for you to have a total takeover. Hallelujah. But if you refuse to serve God and you want to serve yourself, you want to serve your body, but you're still expecting results, you are deceiving yourself. We cannot get results if we do not abide by the principles of God. Look at this. There's Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. The Bible says when Joshua was about to fight Jericho, Joshua saw a man. The Bible says, now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 and verse 14. He said, he saw a man standing in front of him, a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Because Joshua saw that this kind of a soldier, this kind of a man, it's good to have him by our side since we are going to fight Jericho now. He said, it's good to have a, this kind of a man by our side so we can go with this man. Beloved in the Lord, verse 14, listen to the, uh, the way the man answered. He said, neither, he replied, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come, then Joshua fell First down to the ground in a reverence and ask him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The meaning of this beloved in the Lord, he said, the man said to him, it is not up to me to align myself beyond you. It is up to you to choose. Either you decide to align yourself behind me, mm, hallelujah, or you decide to do it by yourself, hallelujah. And on which side are you? He said, I'm not on any side, on the enemies or on your side, but I'm here. So it's up to you. If the enemies decide to align themselves beyond me, I will go with them. If you decide to align yourself beyond me, I will go with you. It is up to us, beloved in the Lord, let me tell you. You rather decide to align yourself beyond the principles of God. You rather allow to uh, submit yourself to God. You rather accept to serve God or you refuse. It's up to you. You align or you don't align. It's up to you. That's why many people will come and say, Pastor, oh, I know this. Pastor, I believe. I trust your, your God. <laughs> this is in 2017. Oh my God. 617. He said it was January. He said that until April, if I do not get this, I will stop serving God. Listen to my answer. I answered and I said, You can go. You can stop serving God. You will go. God will never stop being God because you decide not to serve Him. He will still be God. 
but you will still come back and looking for this God because you will get to the point in life whereby you realize that you cannot live without God. It's up to you. I am not serving God only because I need a result. God, if you don't bless me, I will stop serving you. God, if, if I don't get married this year, no, 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 no. I, I, I think I need to give up on this God. It's too much now. Why is it that all my friends are married? But me, I'm not. I'm still single. Beloved in the Lord. Let me tell you. You can make up your mind. You refuse to submit because you do not see the result. You choose to go your own way. You're still going to need this God. You'll not get to where you are going. I am telling you. It's up to us. Either we align ourselves beyond God's principles. We align ourselves and we accept and allow God information to have a full control over us. We just surrender to him and he will take us to where we want to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Beloved in the Lord, for the person that has already submitted himself to God, for the person that has allowed God to work on him, and for the person that is already serving God and aligning, him, aligning himself beyond the principles and the word of God, total takeover is possible. But let me tell you this, beloved in the Lord. If we want result, Or either if we see result in our life, if you see that you are taking over everything, territories, you are taking over uh, finances, you are taking over government, families, uh, everything you are taking over. I want you to know this, beloved in the Lord. For you to be able to do that, you must always rely on the grace of God. Hallelujah. Any result you see in your life, it is the grace of God. If you are to have a total takeover by the end of this year, and you say that this year was a great year, it has been declared as the year of a total takeover. I've been struggling in this area in my life. I've been facing all these challenges in my life. But this year, because it was a year of a total takeover, I believed in that word. I saw a seed for that word. I knew it was the word that was coming from the Lord. And that word was for me. I seized it uh, and uh, beloved in the Lord. I'm standing in front of you to testify, to tell you about the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has done it for me in, 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 in that testimony, in that rejoicement that you have in your life, uh, you must remember that it is the grace of God. In your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your study, every time you see success, you must always know that it is the grace of God. Success result is not up to you. Faith, it is the grace of God. Whatever you have in your life, it is the grace of God. It has nothing to do with your beauty. Many people think that they are married because they are beautiful. Beloved in the Lord, there are some women that are into prostitution. When you look at them, they are even more beautiful than you, but they never get married. There are some beautiful women that are still out there looking for marriage. You that is in marriage, you must know that it is the grace 
of God. It's not about your beauty. It's not about your education because you are the smartest child. You are the smartest father. You are the smartest mother. That is why you have whatever you have. Let me tell you, everything that you have, you can be smarter, but that smartness without the grace of God is nothing. Everything that you have is not about your connection. It is the grace of God. Yes, indeed, as much as we are serving the purpose of God, we accept to serve God because we need a total takeover and put into practice the potential that God has deposited in me. I accept to serve him either to preach the way I preach to be loved in the Lord, but if I still reserve that, it has nothing to do with my education, with my qualification, with my connection, with whatever I know, I have to consider first. It is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Hallelujah. Verse 12 to 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 12 to 18. Hear what the Bible says. It says. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, and when you build the fine houses and they settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase or, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and the dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and the waterless land, with its venomous snakes and the scorpions. He brought you water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestor has never known, to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and my strength of my hand have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirm his covenant which is so to ancestors as it is today, the grace of the Lord. Hallelujah. Stop forgetting to know that the daughter take over the victory and the success that you have in your life. It's coming for your personal effort. If I can stand today, say that 24 years I gave my life to Christ and I'm still in the Lord, I cannot say that because I am the smartest, smartest the servant of God, I am the clever one, I first stand and say, Abba Father, thank you for your grace. It is the grace of God. If I respect the principles, if I serve God's purpose, Result is inevitable, but once I see the result, I must acknowledge about the grace of God in my life. To acknowledge the grace of God belongs in the Lord, I'll make this statement. It will take away the pride. Secondly, it will make you to be humble. People that you see full of themselves because of result, they are people that do not acknowledge the grace of God in their life. People that you see full of themselves because of a result, you must just know that they have no respect for God. Your God, my God, 
He works beyond the things beloved in the Lord without us knowing, without even letting us know. Sometimes all you see is a positive result, but you do not know what happened. Sometimes you left all, you in the morning, you came back at night. Beloved in the Lord, let me tell you the grace of God. Maybe there was an accident that has been planned on your way, but God fought for you without even telling you. There are certain things you don't pray for. But just because you are serving the purpose of God, you are submissive to God, and God sees your need and supply. I remember the book of Genesis, the Lord said that it's not good for a man to be alone. Adam did not ask. He did not pray. But he was serving the purpose of God. And the Lord had his mind, he needs this, let me supply. Beloved in the Lord, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Stop being full of yourself, beloved in the Lord. I can see some people do not even want to worship God. You see, someone is sitting in church, he thinks he's a boss. You think someone is, is even under the blanket, he's a cover himself, but he's on Zoom. But he said, I am in the presence of God. I am serving God. Beloved in the Lord. They can be locked down, but they will never lock my God down. There can be some restriction, but they will never restrict my God. It is a Sunday, the day of the Lord. I take shower. I will never come on Zoom church without taking shower, dressing up and putting on the perfume. Beloved in the Lord, because in my mind, they can be locked down. My mind is not locked down. My mind is still connected to my Father. I still worship and serve my God the way I should do it. Put on my clothes, sit down, kneel down, lift up my head, dance for the Lord, shout for the Lord, because there is nothing that can restrict my God. There is a lockdown in the world, but the heaven is not locked down. The heaven is open. Oh my God. Lockdown has changed people. No respect for God. You are breathing this morning. Let me tell you, it is the grace of God. I've seen people have been taken to hospital, step into emergency. We have doctors on this platform. They can tell you how some people are struggling to breathe. <laughs> the breath that you are breathing, beloved in the Lord, without any effort. There are some people, they are machines of blood everywhere. They are struggling to breathe. You that is breathing, that you are full of your soul to worship God. You can't know that that breath is the grace of God. You did not even shower. You are still under the blanket love in the Lord. That phone is 20 meters away from you. It's in the sitting room. You are where I don't know outside your chatting, but you are on. You said that I'm, I am in the service. The church is on. The love in the Lord. The grace of God. What can I give you, Lord? Despite lockdown, I still have communion with my God. There is an intimacy with my God. I actually learned a lot during the COVID. It, COVID and the restriction and lockdown open my eyes to have more discipline with my God. Because I know if I can stand on this Zoom, it's not because I know how to wash my hands and to protect myself. It is the grace of God that keeps me alive. Can't you be on Sunday just to say, Father, thank you. Thank 
you for that. Can't I connect and worship my God? Why not? Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, 11. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who comes. She was told the older we serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I love. But Esau, I heard it. 14. What then shall we say is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not therefore depend on the human desire or effort but God missed positive result. It is the mercy of God. Total takeover. You will totally take over over COVID. It is the grace of God. The rest is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Not as the fools come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the lend, to the land, but the time and the chance happen to them all. Ecclesiastes 9 11. Stop being full of yourself. Stop looking other people down because you see that you have been taken up there and they are still down. Whatever you have, the grace of God. Your marriage, the grace of God. You are working, the grace of God. You are pregnant, the grace of God. You are not pregnant for you not to keep on checking. She, she, she got married. She's not giving birth. What happened? Is there any news? All you want to know is any news. It's all you want to know. If you are pregnant, the pregnancy is the grace of God. Total takeover, all the barrenness. Yes, you must know it is the grace of God. Beloved, the Lord, once you begin to see result, do not lean upon your knowledge, the grace of God. Secondly, I don't have much time. I will stop here. Last supply came to Rabash. I want to know you more and more. When I know you, I find you. I want to know you more and more. When I know you, I find you. One people, one person. To know you more and more. Oh my God. Sorry, I'm a king. My supply came to her machine. It's only if you know God that you will notice the grace of God in your life. You will not rely on your effort, but you totally depends on God. Surely, we will see result. We have a total takeover. Yes, I know. It will be there, but the grace of God. Secondly, if you want to see the result, 
total takeover in your life. You must do your assignment. Hallelujah. Every human being in this planet, he or she, we are all born with an assignment. Every time you hear about divine assignment, you must always look at vocation, you must look at the calling, you must look at the mission. And that has nothing for you to become a pastor, to be a bishop, a prophet, evangelist, no beloved in the Lord. There is no reason for that. God created you for a purpose of beloved in the Lord. Proverbs 16 verse 4. It shows that everything is created for a purpose of family. You know, when you when you when you look at documentary, you will see that there are certain birds that can only eat a certain flowers. Oh my God! So if God did not create those flowers, so those birds were gonna be struggling, starving. God took his time even to create a tiny, tiny ant. Ants. You know, all of everything that you see, tiny bit, it's been created for a purpose. Nothing exists without a purpose. Oh my God. For my God is the God of a purpose. He gave you the year 2021 for a purpose. Now you want to have a total takeover in 2021. He's asking you to submit yourself first to his purpose in your life. He says, serve me first. Many people have abused their purpose, but yet they're still claiming and wanting to have a total takeover. I love Luther King when he made a statement. He said, when the purpose of a product is not discovered, abuse is inevitable. Beloved in the Lord, you have an assignment. You have an assignment. Leave and fulfill your assignment before you see result in your life. Stop living for the sake of living. You must have something that keeps you going. You must have something that gives you the energy and motivates you to wake up in the morning that you want to do. I know this is my assignment. I live for this. This is what I want to do. If I know what I live for, nobody will carry me anyway. There are some people that you can carry them anyway anyhow they will follow they will go because they have nothing to do they do not know their assignment i'm coming to pick you i'm going to to Galway. you wanna go with me yeah yes i'm coming yes, let's just go no go away but here i want to see my friend in Arthur. there you go your day is just a finish they are taking you anyway anyhow why because you do not have an assignment you have an assignment to fulfill beloved in the Lord in this earth planet. Discover it and do it for the Lord. The Lord God provision will be released when you are at the place of your calling, your assignment. That is where the provision will meet you. That is where the Lord will supply anything that you want. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I read from verse 2. Listen to that. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the, Jerry, the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. Mission. The assignment, the mandate. 
Moses is no more. Now here's your assignment, Joshua. Hallelujah. Here's your assignment. An assignment. Beloved in the Lord. Look at this. I have a glass of water here. All right. Now, God created me. My assignment is to collect this glass of water. It's far away from me. God take it and put it there. Say, I, I need someone to collect the glass of water. And God created me. Okay? After creating me, he said, but Daniel need legs to get that glass of water. He gave me legs. He said, but Daniel needs eyes to see what I want him to kill. He gave me eyes. He also needs strength to carry it. He gave me strength. So if I am working, my assignment is to go and collect the glass of water. He gave me legs. He gave me eyes. But God did not give me eyes to look at women. God gave me eyes to see the glass. Hallelujah. I hope you understand that example. That is how many of us, we are going out of our assignment. God gave you something, but I'm using these eyes for something different. Instead of me to look at my assignment, now I start looking at women. The eyes is not for me to look at women. The eyes is for me to look at my assignment. Hallelujah. Whatever God deposited inside of you, the energy God has given you, beloved in the Lord, what are you using it for? There are some that are using it to fight to beat their wives. This map God has given you, there are some that are using it to insult. Praise the Lord. But I pray that may the Lord give us the grace to go back to our assignment in Jesus' mind. You see, before a total takeover, when you read verse 3, now you say, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised to Moses. Total takeover. He continued, your territory will extend, will extend from desert to Lebanon and from Great River to Ephrata, all the entire country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. A total takeover. First, you see your assignment. Joshua, your assignment is to take these people to the promised land. And once you submit to the assignment, now you will have a total takeover of other territory. You will not have a total takeover if you do not respect the assignment God has given you. Praise the Lord. And once you are submissive to God, I'm closing. Once you are submissive to God, beloved kingdom, you acknowledge the grace of God in your life. You abide by your assignment. Once you do these two things, you, will, you are placing yourself or putting yourself under divine protection. That's where divine protection is coming from. Because you are doing the will of God and you're under divine protection. Praise the Lord. Do you know what the Lord said in Exodus when the angel was to come and strike every firstborn? The angel was given a mandate to say that a house that you see black, he said, What? Pass by. But the house where there is no blood on the doorpost, kill the firstborn. The angel was not being sent with instruction that spread the life of the Israelites. No. It's the house where there is no blood on the doorpost. That house is to suffer the consequences. If an Israelite was in a house whereby there was no blood, Oh my God, the angel will strike. Beloved in the Lord, the moment you are not under the coverage, you are exposed. 
There is nothing that you will achieve. There is nothing that you will see in your life. You have the calling of God. Abide by the assignment. Do the will of God. You are putting yourself and your household under divine protection. Even for your marriage, beloved in the Lord. Everything, you are putting it under divine coverage. Hallelujah. I want you to know that it is very important to abide by your assignment. To do the will of God. Before total takeover. Make up your mind today to be with Jesus, not to be against him. Align yourself beyond him. One day, the disciples were crossing the river and the storm was rising against their, their, their boat. The Bible said, they wake him up, Jesus, he woke up and spoke to the storm. Now imagine if in that day they were in the boat where Jesus was not present, what could have happened? Beloved in the Lord, storms are one of the things that we, we have to face every day in our life. Be prepared to face the storm every day of your life. I am telling you, but if you are facing the storm, you must be in the boat where Jesus is present. And you'll not be afraid of anything. It will give you victory. You will have a total takeover, even on the nature. Why? Because you are not alone. I am with Jesus. I abide by him. I abide by my assignment. I go with him. He's with me in the boat. There is nothing that I fear. The disciples were to die, but because they were not alone, Jesus was there and he gave them a victory. Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord is speaking to you. This morning, the Lord is talking to someone that you need to come back to your assignment. Do the will of God. Serve God. Serving God is not only for you to be a pastor beloved in the Lord. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. The gift is there. You are anointed. The talent is there. But you are not abiding by the assignment. You are not serving God's purpose, but you are serving your own purpose. This morning, the Lord is calling you back. Loud. It was not easy. When I gave my life to Christ, 1997, the 8th of May, I served, I served in 2011. I had to resign. You know, sometimes I always sit and think the way I went to university, how I really struggled, how I really pushed, I never had the rest. I really studied, I was working morning, uh, studying morning, going to work in the evening. And they did that beloved in the law for three years. The career money was very good. If I mean very good, it's very good. Had a beautiful life. But there's something that inside of me, beloved in the Lord, was not at peace because my career could not allow me to serve God. It was taking most of my time. I have to sit down and make up my mind. Now I'm doing the purpose of my flesh because I have, I'm earning money, but I have less time for God. I have to make up my mind. And God will never forsake you if you are doing, you are abiding by, by your as divine assignment. Beloved in the Lord, serve God's purpose. You'll never be deceived. I've never been happier than the way I am right now. Because I left my career. But the Lord still opened other channels for me. And I'm into bio vocation. 
And I bless the name of the Lord for that. This morning, beloved, in the Lord, the Lord may not ask you to do what I did, but the Lord is maybe asking you to leave something, beloved, in the Lord. Whatever you are doing is keeping you away from divine assignment. The Lord is calling you. Let me tell you, there was a child in the 12-story building up there, and the child wanted to jump. The father was in the darkness. The father was shouting and telling the child, jump! The child said, but I cannot see you, daddy. He said, jump, I can see you. You will not fall down. Daddy, it's too dark. Yes, I know, but jump. The child jumped because it was the voice of the father. The child has a confidence to believe and the trust in the father. The child jumped. And the father carried the child in his heart. The child never fell down. This afternoon, the Lord is asking someone that sees darkness. You are too lost. You don't know how to abide by divine assignment. Beloved in the Lord, you are very scared. Let me tell you, you will jump. You will not fall down. Your father will carry you. Believe your God. Trust God this morning. Abide by divine assignment. The Lord is calling you. Serve him with what you have. Serve the Lord with your talent. Serve the Lord, beloved, in the Lord. Should I can sing, serve the Lord. Serve the purpose of God. Do not serve your own purpose with your voice, with your beauty, with your talent. Anything you can do, beloved, in the Lord, for the Lord, the Lord is calling you this morning. Hallelujah. I will follow you till the end of time, Lord. I just want you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, here I am. I'm ready. Help me to make up my mind to abide by divine assignment this morning. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I want to abide by divine assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I want to serve. I want to throw myself. I know I will not fall. You will carry me. I believe in you. I was far away from you, Lord, serving my own purpose, ignorant of the grace of God in my life. But this morning, I'm so grateful. I acknowledge your grace in my life. And I pray that you give me the grace to abide by divine assignment, Lord. Before total takeover, oh my God. Because a total takeover will never come if we do not abide by divine assignment. Father, help us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. God bless you, beloved in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's thank God. Let's bless him. Come on, let's 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 give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him praise. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Life of.